This is the Living Adaptive Podcast, and for today's show, we speak with professional athlete and recovering paraplegic Christian Otter Bailey. Tune in, people, to hear his story, his advice on adapting to the difficult stuff and what he's working on. Five and a half years ago, I was shot multiple times, and I uh, was diagnosed with a spinal cord injury. Well, at that moment, I didn't know how drastic my life was about to change. And it didn't change for the worse, but it changed for the better. Actually, I was talking with my colleague, the care doctor today, and she, she turned around to me and she looked at me and she was like, do you think that if you keep on doing all these like things that we don't expect you to be able to complete, that you'll eventually be beat this? And I was blown away by a doctor asking me that question. And I was sort of like, Actually, yeah, that's probably what I'm trying to do. Well, I know what my body's going to do to me. I've got a wheelchair in my future. But you know what I've been looking for? What's that? One with off-road the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing will ever take away the pain of my daughter not being here. She will be 18 next month. Um, and it still feels like maybe five years ago, two years ago that she died. It's, that's my reality. Well, if you can go back to that day, February 18, 1990, and change what happened, my... My honest answer is I, I wouldn't change it because I wouldn't, if I didn't get hurt that day, you know, I wouldn't be in front of that school. I wouldn't be in front of the schools in the upcoming weeks or I wouldn't be talking with you or I wouldn't be at Children's Hospital on staff there. This was just my journey and it, it's given me an opportunity to have a, a profound impact on a lot of people and inspire and change lives. You can expect a life to kick you in the teeth and knock you on the floor but you always get back up no matter what and you just keep going living adaptive with scott davidson a podcast about learning to live adaptively and now scott davidson in july of 2006 i'd returned home to santa cruz from a surf trip in morocco and despite being exhausted i agreed to shoot some footage for a skate video out at derby after about an hour of filming, it was time for a final hurrah. I was aiming to land a boneless 360 finger flip, which was a trick that I had down to a science and could land off the large gap on command. So there I went, charging full speed ahead at about 25 miles per hour. When I went to launch, my left knee proceeded to dislocate on takeoff, which sent me careening backwards at full speed. I slammed the concrete hard, fracturing several vertebrae in my back. I was eventually life flighted to Stanford Medical Center where I was diagnosed with a severe spinal cord injury to my L3, L4, and a tether T12 and paralyzed from the waist down. That was the moment where my old life ended and where my new one began. That's Christian Bailey describing his accident to a writer from the Santa Cruz Waves. Really briefly, some background on Christian Bailey who we interviewed. He is a pro surfer and really well known for his experience as a surf safari guide and skills as a big wave surfer and also skateboarder. Christian grew up in Santa Cruz, California area, and there he, that's where he established himself as a pro surfer and skateboarder. His life was intensely adventurous as he traveled the world as a pro athlete, but his life all changed on July 23rd, 2006. In this episode, you'll hear about how Christian adapted to life after the crash. He's still a pro athlete sponsored everywhere from big name clothing lines like Volcom and stuff like that. And he's won way too many surf competitions to list. And you can see some of those in the show notes. He has pioneered adaptive surfing. He is a chair skater too, and he's been showcased in the opening of the Paralympic Games. He also went on to become the captain of USA Surfing. He has way too many accolades to list. He currently remains the only paralyzed professional big wave surfer in the world. Besides athletics, Christian is also active in nonprofit organizations, and this includes being the CEO of Ocean Healing Group. And we talk about this in the interview. Ocean Healing Group is a nonprofit dedicated to providing once in a lifetime adaptive sports adventures in Costa Rica. And this is for children who use wheelchairs and their parents. Bailey is also an ambassador for the Life Rolls On Foundation, which is a nonprofit that promotes active lifestyles for young people who have sustained spinal cord injuries. Christian Bailey is a great interview, and that is coming up next. But first, 
you can find us at livingadaptive.com. Remember to go there, find previous episodes and all kinds of good stuff, including links to our social media. And also, you can find Christian Bailey on Facebook at Christian Otter Bailey. And you can find his organization, Ocean Healing Group, at oceanhealinggroup.org. And also, you can find him at Box Wheelchairs, and this is boxwheelchairs.com. And lastly, you can find Christian Bailey on Instagram at insta underscore otter. And if you need links to it, go ahead and open your phone up right now. Look at your app and click show notes because all that stuff is there. It's all there for you people. I make it easy. Anyways, without delaying any more, this is the great Christian Otter Bailey. All right. What's up, everybody? What's up to Christian Otter Bailey? Thanks for coming on, man. Really excited to have you on today. I've been trying to chase you down for a while. Glad to get you on. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thank you, Scott. No, it's my pleasure, man. And sorry, it's taken a couple of months, but uh, yeah, I've been on the road a lot. Yeah, speaking of that, you're always on the road. It looks like where uh, you just got back from travels. Where were you? Uh, I was in uh, Taipei, Taiwan, and um, Bali, and then uh, Java, Indonesia for a month. For a month. So what what were you doing out there? Yeah. Um, well, I was surfing in Bali, and um, had a little business in Taipei, and then. Uh, uh, predominantly, my main mission out there was um, I work really closely with an international NGO um, called Global Mobility, um, and uh, Ohana Indonesia. They're attached as a United Nations delegation, and I was there uh, as part of a medical delegation to distribute. Uh, let me see, uh, two hundred and eighty something wheelchairs. So, Jeez. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Holy shit, that's a lot of wheelchairs, man. And so, um, how often do you do trips like that? Um, periodically throughout the year, um, tour schedule with surfing and um and everything else is is pretty ridiculous but um i always try and you know take out the time when i have a you know uh spare moments here and there and try and help out where i can dude does the grind get you though all that travel because i do follow you i follow you on social media i do see you're traveling i i see you're always traveling actually it's like all the time you're involved in so much stuff does that grind of the travel get you because travel eventually beats me up uh, yeah, I mean, a, a little bit. I mean, you, you start doing like a, a two or three month stinge and it, it gets pretty, uh, pretty grindy, but, um, I mean, I've been doing it most of my life. I've been, uh, a professional surfer and skater prior to my injury as well. Um, so I've been doing this for about 25 years now. So. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. So I am, uh, I'm a fan of you as a skater too. I was a skater growing up. Um, <laughs> and so like, in fact, when I was preparing for this interview, I thought you have impeccable music taste too, because the music you added to those <laughs> <laughs> to the videos were great. Uh, a lot of no effects, a lot Thank of stuff you. that I grew up with, man. And uh, I went to you know a lot of those concerts. It was a great time in my life, and so I, I thought you know really good stuff. So nice. and, and I'm also super jealous of where you live, Santa Cruz. Um, I, we <laughs> debate getting up that way. It's just so expensive. Is the cost worth it up there? Oh God, it's, it's gotten so hideous in the last, uh, I want to say the last 10 years is it's gotten really, really bad. Um, inevitably what, you know, has happened is, uh, because of the inundation of, you know, the tech industry, you know, Google, Facebook, uh, Oracle, so on and so forth. Uh, you just have this, uh, this massive population of, of, you know, younger people who have, you know, uh, you know, piles of discretionary income. So they're able to, you know, drop, you know, one point one million dollars on a house out here is nothing. Um, and essentially it's turned Santa Cruz in, into Malibu, Northern California. So um that yeah, it's, sucks. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's difficult. You've you've lost uh you know quite a bit of the original character and soul that used to make Santa Cruz, you know, really uh special and unique. But you know, the town's still there and the surf is certainly still there. So yeah. Um pretty fortunate to to have that still in my life. Yeah, that's like Southern California too. They kind of burnt that area out. It's way too much money. I go in there a lot. I'm always traveling out that way. And it's just, I don't know, the vibe's different for sure. For sure, just a lot of wealth in there. And I'm not saying wealth is bad or anything. It's just, uh, it, it, it makes it difficult to, to live there, for instance, or do a lot of things you used to do there, you know? So, yeah, it certainly does, especially for the surfers. You know, I mean, we, you know, uh, traditionally we're, we're not the, the, the highest paid, you know, demographic. So, uh, you know, it, it definitely makes it a, a strain at times, but it, it's certainly worth it. You know, getting up every morning for Dawn Patrol is always, uh, always a pleasure. So, so what got you into skating and surfing, for instance, I mean, for, for both of them, was it like cultural for me? It was like cultural. I hopped into skating cause it was just my tribe. You know what I mean? And, um, what, what, yeah, 
It was that it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you grew up in Santa Cruz, especially in the eighties and nineties. And this is before, you know, the tech industry got really, uh, you know, heavily uh, populated out in Silicon Valley. Um, but yeah, I mean, Santa Cruz was always, uh, you know, I almost kind of equate it to like, um, like Venice back in, you know, the, the seventies, early eighties, it was like one of the last great, you know, seaside slums, so to speak, you know, you had, uh, a lot of, you know, really awesome families and, you know, this, this, uh, you know, really, really rich culture and history of, of surfing and skating, you know, um, in, in Santa Cruz. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's always been a part of my life and, you know, um, started when I was really, really young and, um, yeah, just kind of flourished from there. Yeah. I watched something on Venice, like, um, was it like a week ago? I think it was vice or somebody, somebody put together something on Venice and what it was like back in the day. It was pretty incredible to see the difference. I mean, I remember going to Venice like 20 years ago, but still that wasn't that long ago compared to what, you know, but it is really different. It's one of the most expensive zips and, um, in California now. So it's really, yeah, really crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Venice still keeps a lot of its uh, kind of seaside character to a certain extent. You know, it's it's become a lot more. Uh, I don't know what the right word would be. Bohemian would be the yeah would for be sure. A, a good yeah. adjective to describe it, but uh, yeah, that's it, it's still got a lot of its its original flair and and style to it. It hasn't been uh, it hasn't been overrun. Yeah, it hasn't know, become like Huntington thing. or something. So yeah, exactly. I I've like I heard your story, man. You're 12 years old when you got sponsored for skating. How does that even happen? Uh, well, you know, kind of once again, it's, it's Santa Cruz. I mean, um, Santa Cruz has always been a, a very, um, heavily localized, very performance oriented skate and surf scene. And, um, if you perform well and, you know, people, uh, take note and, um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to grow up, you know, surfing the steamer lane and, and Derby. And from a really young age, I was, you know, kind of, uh, taken under the wings by, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, the hardcore chargers mm -hmm. in and around Santa Cruz. And, um, it just kind of, you know, sprouted from there. Um, just, uh, started off just being a, the fun pastime with me and my friends. And, uh, um, you know, I've been told I have a pretty unique style when I, you know, when it came to skating. So, uh, and surfing. So it just kind of, uh, just kind of developed over time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. When did you become sponsored for like surfing? Also the same age? Oh, same age. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Same That's age. Crazy. It, was, it was, it was a dual, um, it was, it was a dual contract. So, there's not much of that though, like the the dual side of things, right? I, I might not be familiar, but it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of people that get sponsored on both sides. Am I right? Um, well, I mean, it, it it's it's a lot less likely now. Um, back then, you know, at that time in that place, I mean, we're talking about the early '90s. Yeah. Um, this is when skateboarding and surfing were really kind of, especially skateboarding, um, was really uh, having its resurgence. Um, where, you know, it kind of disappeared off the map, um, you know, in the, the mid to late eighties mm -hmm. and then, you know, kind of a stagnation point. And then, uh, as soon as the first X games came out, all of a sudden, you know, it was like, uh, it was like the razor all of a sudden, every kid had to have a skateboard <laughs> for, you know, and, yeah. um, it, it, the scene really blew up and you started seeing all these new, uh, skate parks sprouting up all over the country and, uh, you know, um, you know, a lot more attention, you know, uh, focusing on the sport so um yeah it uh it, it was a fun time really fun time yeah well i sucked but i really enjoyed watching people like you that like really uh refined the art and did so well excelled so much in it it was it just it was really cool and i was watching some stuff uh today i'm just it's pretty impressive man it's really impressive your athletic abilities are are significant for sure so uh, I don't know. No, thank you. But I mean, it's, it's all about having fun at the end of the day. You know, I mean, may, making a career out of it's one thing, but you know, is uh, I always like to hang around people that you know are having the most fun with it. You know, they're going to take themselves too seriously. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a fun lifestyle. Travel intensive though. Man, you got a massive story though. Uh, Two thousand six is when you had your accident, right? You're actually filming a skate video. Is that right? With like Santa Cruz or something? Yeah. When it went down? Yeah. Yeah. The Santa Cruz V day video. And, um, yeah, I just come back from, uh, I was living in Morocco at the time. Um, I was helped a good friend of mine start a surf expedition company out there. And, uh, we just gotten back off, uh, like a month long, uh, adventure down Mauritania and, um, the Western Sahara and, um, was super jet lagged and, um, you know, kick open the door and I, I mean, I literally throw down my bags and, um, 
was about to like pile in the bed and um, I get a call from my tour manager saying, um, or a team manager rather, um, saying, you know, we're, we're filming the new Vita video. We need your spot. Get the hell out here. Um, we're filming it today right now. Um, so grab my board and headed out to Derby, um, which is a park I've been skating since, you know, the mid eighties, um, or late eighties. And, um, yeah, just, uh, put down some great runs and, uh, was, uh, was you know happy with my skating and you know it was famous last words one last trick and um um went to go do a bonus 360 finger flip over uh, the derby gap um and i go piling into the bird bath bowl full speed and um proceed to go to launch it and my left knee blows out on takeoff Damn. which uh sent me off axis and uh essentially i landed backwards leaning forward going about you know 30 miles an hour um and compression fractured uh you know two vertebrae in my back so do you remember it when it all went down? Can you still remember it? Yeah. Damn. Oh yeah. No, uh, yeah. No, I'd, I don't forget things like that. And um, yeah, I was uh, not very fortunate in the fact that you know I was totally awake and conscious during the entire process. So um, yeah, it was uh, it was a you know a big shock. And did you know how how injured you were at the time when it happened? Like, did you know that you no. were okay? No, no, that was, um, you know, that was the, the hardest part of it, um, was that, you know, I was 25 years old and young and quote unquote invincible. And, um, my knee was hurting a hell of a lot more than my back was, um, I had torn two ligaments, of my meniscus. Um, so my friends, uh, you know, they shouldered me, um, and, uh, went back to my buddy's house and, um, you know, uh, basically took to Viking and down to 40 and um, passed out on the couch and woke up six hours later covered in piss and couldn't feel anything. Holy shit. From my waist down. So, um, yeah, what ended up happening is uh, by not paying attention to it, not going to the hospital immediately, my uh, spinal cord had swelled um, around the crushed vertebrae and caused uh, some pretty significant um, spinal cord damage. So, um, yeah, I got airlifted to Stanford Medical Center and um, yeah, when, uh, went in for surgery and, um, when I came out of surgery, uh, doctors had, uh, came into my room and basically told me that, you know, I'd sustained a pretty massive spinal cord injury. So, man, freak. I didn't know the, um, afterward, you know, like how it went down with swelling and stuff and that that's crazy. And then like when he came into the, the room, did he give you the news that, Hey, it, it could be a while you're recovering from this or or was it just, just, you know, gave you really tough news right away? Well, I mean, uh, the, yeah, I mean, the, the doctor who I had was, was great. I mean, I was the first straight shooter. Um, and you know, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't about to cover anything in bullshit. You know, he had mm -hmm. said that, you know, uh, that I had some pretty significant nerve damage and you know, it was going to be a long road to recovery and blah, blah, blah. You know, all those, you know, uh, typical doctor qualifiers, you know? But, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, um, it is what it is. I mean, I don't, um, I've always been the kind of person that, um, doesn't, doesn't really try to fixate on the, on the things in life that you can't change. You know, I've always been, um, all about moving forward and, um, you know, uh, and not hindering yourself on, you know, on, on what's there. So, um, yeah. It, uh, was that right away that you were able time. to, was that right away you were able to take that attitude, that approach, Hey, I'm going to move forward. Uh, shit happened, but now it's time to move forward or did it click like that? Yeah. Um, excuse me. I got a car pulled by. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it definitely took a few weeks. Um, the, the, the month, a little bit over a month that I spent in the hospital was definitely, uh, it was definitely a shocker. You know, you have to basically relearn how to do everything. You know, you have to learn how to transfer. You know, you're mm -hmm. in a turtle shell back brace, which is like being in a vice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're having nurses come and take care of you. You got to learn how to, you know, go to the bathroom again, you know, by yourself. You have to learn how to transfer. You have to learn how to, you know, get out of the cars and, and you know, you go into to rehab and, and all this stuff. And, um, yeah, I think the, the real, um, uh, real turning point for me, uh, personally was um i went to i transferred from stanford to san jose valley medical center um for my rehab yep and 
you know, they, uh, they have these peer support meetings, um, you know, spinal cord injury peer support. And, uh, I think the, the real, you know, critical turning point for me was, you know, it was sitting in a room with a, a bunch of new injuries and, you know, everyone's kind of going through, you know, that, that typical shock and awe, um, kind of mental mentality where it's the, Oh, poor me, you know, pity party scenario. Uh-huh. Um, and I've, I've never been, um, I've never been subject to that. I've always, you know, uh, been about moving on and moving forward, no matter what the challenge or, you know, trial or tribulation is in life. And, um, uh, I immediately decided after about a week and a half of dealing with that, that I wasn't going to be privy to that. And, um, I immediately went to outpatient rehab, um, you know, and, and wanted to get home and, and kind of move on and, uh, you know, get out of that, that kind of would have, could have, should have, uh, you know, an environment, mm-hmm. you know, where everyone's, you know, um, constantly, um, kind of bummed and, and, and not, uh, not coming to terms, you know, with their, uh, their lot in life. So, um, I think that was a, uh, a really good step for me personally. I think it was, um, I think it was beneficial in the fact that, you know, I've, I've always tried to populate my, my schedule with, you know, always doing something, never sitting at home, never, um, uh, kind of allowing myself to become stagnant, um, or sedimentary, you know, just, uh, always, always keeping my schedule filled with, with something, whether it's just going for a push down the street or going out with friends or, you know, just always keeping on the move. And I think that, that, that played a large part, um, for me personally and, and being able to move forward and, uh, and, and yeah, you know, um, yeah, I think it was beneficial. <laughs> it was a good call in the end. Yeah, for sure, man. I don't know. I get that where if sitting around and just waiting for things to get better, better isn't going to work. Um, do you, out of curiosity, do you, from rehab, did you see, have you seen some of the folks you were in rehab with since this time? Have you seen how they've turned out, you know? Uh, um, yeah, actually, um, a good friend of mine, Eric Lindsley, who was living in Santa Cruz at the time, um, he was in the chair as well. And, uh, um, he was a, a big mountain biker and, um, super nice guy and, um, a skater as well. Um, and, uh, we started hanging out a lot together and we actually ended up going back to, um, Valley med, um, and, uh, as the guests of the peer support meeting, um, just to try and, um, kind of give people a little bit of a different take, you know, kind of being that outside element where, you know, you're, you, you can tell people, you know, it, there, there's no bullshit, you know, here, like I, I, I've been exactly where you were and, you know, this is how, you know, I moved on from it and, you know, I'm not saying it'll always work, but, uh, you know, um, just trying to give them an alternate perspective, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I did. I did end up seeing a lot of the, the staff and, and doctors and, um, rehab personnel and stuff like that is, is really fun. So your coping mechanisms seem like get up, get going. Like, um, so in one of your articles, you, I think you wrote it. I don't know for sure. I'm actually pulling it up right now. And it was a uh, history of otter as told mostly by himself. And you talk a little bit about how oh, yeah. you had a buddy, how long after rehab, like how long were you in rehab first? Uh, just over two weeks. That's it. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. That's- they, yeah. They basically taught Tommy had a, you know, um, you know, taught me the importance of stretching, mm-hmm. you know, uh, fitting me for, you know, a set of AFOs, which are braces. And, yeah, I know. Yep. You know, yeah, it taught me about, you know, bathroom stuff and schedule stuff and this, that, and the other and pain management and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, at, at that point, as soon as we kind of went into the, the daily grind of, uh, of rehab, I was like, you know, I've, I've been here long enough. I'm out. <laughs> so that's cool. Well, I, going back to your, one of the pieces you wrote, one of your buddies like came to your house. I don't know. It was, it was a, it was a good line. I, oh, can you yeah. take us there where like, you're going to go surfing for the first time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So that was Barney, uh, my, uh, uh, tow partner and, um, really good friend of mine who unfortunately lost a couple of years ago. Uh, oh, dang. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, it was a big hit for the whole community, but, um, Barney was, uh, there was nobody called quite like him. You know, he was, you know, an artist and an incredible surfer and skater and, um, bipolar is all hell but in the best possible way. <laughs> yeah. Like, like he's one of those kind of, kind of guys where, you know, he's crazy, but you know, you absolutely love him for his craziness. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he, uh, this was, Oh God, like two or three days out of the hospital. And, uh, I was, you know, on some pretty heavy pain meds at the time. And, uh, he, uh, 
he comes banging on my door and oh god, I don't even think the sun was barely up at that point. But um yeah, he comes banging on my door and you know, the sun had barely even come up. It must have been like oh god, I don't know, like five o'clock. God knows what the hell he was on. But um I open the door, you know, and I'm in a turtle shell back race, you know, one of these you know, big cumbersome things and yeah. Barney's there and he's like he's like, Yo Hunter, what are you doing? We're going surfing, motherfucker, and you're not getting out of it. We're going right now. Get your shit on. We're going. We're going. And I'm just like, Barnes, I'm in no condition to surf. He's like, yeah, yeah, fuck that. We're going. And so uh, he uh, helps me into my wetsuit, and we, he grabs my my ninth because I, you know, I had to lay down on the board, and but I was always riding shortboards. I never had a long board, so he grabs my 1978 Robert August single fin like lightning bolt board, which mm-hmm. is like, you know, just this this epic old school, like perfect condition, Robert August surfboard, you know, like j- just a, an absolute masterpiece of, of old school tech. And, um, I grabs it off my wall and, and starts waxing it up. And it's like, fine, I can't surf that board, man. If I, if I lay that thing to the rocks, like I'm going to, I'm going to cry for like a week. He's like, no, no, fuck that. We're going surfing. So he <laughs> throws me in my chair and pushes me out to a uh, rock view, which yeah. is a, uh, you know, a pretty heavy break, like right around the, the corner from my house and on pleasure point. And, uh, and yeah, they, you know, I was joined by a couple other, uh, buddies and they helped me in the water and, you know, it was, it wasn't super big, but it, you know, it, it was a healthy pump. It was probably like, you know, four or six feet and, uh, they're duck diving me on the board and here I am sliding everywhere. My legs are, you know, flopping everywhere. Cause I hadn't learned to strap them together at that point. Sure. And, uh, and yeah, they take me out to Rockview and the, the waves are pumping and he pushes me into my first wave post injury. And, you know, it was from, really from that point that I realized that, you know, you know, I could still surf, you know, uh, it might take a little bit of a crew, but I could still surf. And, you know, it was a good starting point. Um, and it was a, you know, a real, uh, a real tipping point for me, you know, uh, physically and especially mentally. Um, so I really kind of used that as a catalyst, to, uh, you know, to, to constantly improve and, you know, um, getting in the water and, and then surfing every single day, you know, was always my life prior to getting hurt. And, um, yeah, I quickly made it, you know, a, a daily part of my life uh, post injury as well. So to this day, you're out today, right? Maybe. Yeah. Nice. Oh no, I no, I surf professionally. I'm a captain of the U.S. Paralympic Surf Team. <laughs> Did you pioneer it? Would you say you're one of the pioneers in this realm? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I'd, I think other people would be pretty uh, easy to say that you know, I, I was definitely, uh, I was definitely one of them, especially as far as big waves go. Yeah. Um, you know, they're always, um, there were the rather adaptive surfers as well. You know, you have like Jesse Bilauer in Southern California and, you know, Asino Parada and, you know, in Brazil and, you know, Mark Lennar Stewart in Australia, you know, there's always these, these little enclaves, um, you know, where, you know, there'd be a single adaptive surfer, but, um, you know, it wasn't until just in the last few years that our sports really come to the forefront and blown up. I mean, literally blown up, you know, with the introduction of the ISA adaptive surfing world championships and, um, you know, USA surfing and, yeah. uh, you know, our, our, you know, induction into, uh, into Olympic surfing. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, been a crazy wild ride, man. Yeah. I saw, I see, uh, organizations popping up. Like, um, I think one's like, uh, surf the wave you're given, uh, you got Luke Sharp's group out in the Carolinas somewhere, North or South Carolina. Yeah. I see yeah, them out yeah. there. Yeah. I see. I, yeah. It's a uh, wheel to surf. I think is the name. Something. I could be wrong. Something and I like uh it's 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 way more prevalent than previously. Um, I don't know. It it just wasn't for me. I didn't I didn't know it was in a spotlight till you. You know what I mean. And then uh, from there, you can start to see other organizations. They link off your page, whatever, or or whatever it is, or and and then you start to see that these other ones exist. So yeah, I would say for sure, pioneer. I didn't know if you identified as that, but I, I would say you did. Um, it's, it's really cool though. It's really rad. You have an organization. One of the big reasons why I wanted to get you on here is so people can know about adaptive surfing. A lot of people already know you were pro for uh wheelchair motocross too, right? You, you get involved in that. But, um, a huge thing is, is your group, your oceans healing group. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's a, that's another really, really cool story. Um, I wish in the new ability article they had, um, they've mentioned, you know, more of the whole story and how it came to be, but, um, you know, uh, column inches being what they are, you know, it, uh, something mm-hmm. got taken out, but, um, but it was a really interesting and cool story behind that. So, um, I was on the road, I forget where I was coming back from. I think it was maybe, uh, an ASP event in Europe. Um, but I had, 
I was on my way to Los Angeles <clears throat> for a, a big charity fundraiser for uh, one of those adaptive surfing foundations. Life rolls on, and um, the uh, and I get stuck. I was in Texas. Um, I think you were, I'm pretty sure it was Dallas Fort Worth, um, and I was on an extended layover. And this massive like storm had come through. It was like thunder and lightning, and all the flights were canceled. And um, I was sitting there, and you know it, it ended up turning into like a 15 hour layover. Well. Um, flights to finally start popping up on the board again. And I'm, you know, just going through my phone and, um, and checking emails and stuff like that. And, um, I checked my MySpace page. <laughs> how long <laughs> yeah, ago it was. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, I was operating under a pseudonym at that time called Santa Cruz Soul Surfer. And there was a message from a guy named Frank Bauer, um, who lives in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, he sent me a friend request and a message and I don't think too much of it. And, um, um, now look at his his uh his profile and he's got uh you know some pictures of him surfing and you know i can see that you know he grew up in florida and he's living in colorado and um shortly after the friend request he sends me a message and says you know i'm i don't know if this is who i think it is um but i'm going to take a shot in the dark anyway my name is frank bauer um i own a plot of land in costa rica that i just bought it's nothing but jungle um, I, um, I'm thinking about maybe starting, um, uh, a surf camp or a resort out there, but I'd like to include adaptive surfing in it somehow. Wow. Um, please hit me up when you, when you get a, when you get a chance, um, uh, signed sincerely Frank Bauer. And, um, and he had sent, uh, his number, um, as well. And I sent him the message back and I said, yeah, this is Christian. And, and he says, dude, I, I've been trying to track you down for like the last six weeks. Um, and, uh, you know, this is before social media was, you know, made it an instantaneous, you know, communication. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, you know, um, we, we, we got to get together. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll go anywhere. I'll meet you anywhere. Um, I have an idea. I want to fire it by, you. um, let me know where you're going to be. And I said, well, I'm actually on my way to LA I'm back in the country now. And he says, great. When can we meet? Um, and I said, well, you know, I'll basically I'll be there for a couple of days and then I got to leave again. And, um, as a testament to his, uh, his, his drive and ambition, he literally booked, a booked a flight five minutes later, flew out to, to uh, Los Angeles, rented a car and we met at a Denny's in West Hollywood at like <laughs> 1230 at night. No. And, and we stayed up for, you know, we probably sat there and ate and drank, you know, copious amounts of coffee and moons over my hammy. And yeah, um, that was really good late left. night. Yeah, and um, we left uh, just as the sun was coming up with a stack of napkins, and what we came up with was ended up being Ocean Healing Group. And um, you know, over the course of the next eight months, uh, you know, he, um, I helped him completely rework the designs of the camp, and we made it all ADA compliant and accessible with rolling showers and ramps, and um, and simultaneously, we always uh, or we also came up with a. Uh, an adaptive surfing program, you know, and I utilized uh, my connections within uh, Life Rolls On and all the fantastic volunteers they have there. And um, yeah, in December of 2008, we had our first uh, our first camp. We're coming up on 10 years now. Is it each year? Um, we actually, uh, we typically hold them uh, anywhere from two to four times a year, um, wow. periodically. Um, uh, this last year has been really, really crazy, you know, with you know, uh, the Olympic surfing blowing up and my mm-hmm. schedule is just absolutely insane right now. Um, um, and he's, uh, you know, going through some, some personal stuff. So unfortunately last year we didn't hold a camp, but this year we're coming back strong and we're probably going to hold, uh, at least two or three. We you hold a camp. Um, I, I would think that you're going to get a lot of apprehension, kids scared, for instance, or adults scared to even give it a go, travel, travel down, you know, and give it a go to, to get on the board to do that. Um, do you see that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, not, not so much now, but when we were first starting, um, absolutely. Um, I mean, you always have, you know, there, there's always that kind of an inherent apprehension, you know, especially from parents because, you know, they're, they're used to be always being the primary caregivers of their kids and, mm-hmm. and, you know, and everything has to be scheduled and, and maintained and so on and so forth. And then you have accessibility issues. And, um, basically what we're offering is to, um, to take them on an all-inclusive package that, doesn't cost them a dime and you know we we fly them and the and the family out and you know we have you know professional uh instructive staff we have a fully accessible camp we have you know basically all the logistics uh 
we're taken care of. Um, so all they have to do is basically show up at the airport and we're gone. Um, so it's, uh, when we were first starting, it was definitely a leap of faith for those first families. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we typically try and select our campers very, very carefully. Um, we, we want campers who are, you know, who have that spark, um, who want to push their limits, who, who are enthusiastic about trying new things, um, who, who want to take, um, you know, take their skill set and take it to that next level. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty rigorous selection process, but it's a lot of fun. And we've met, you know, just some of the most amazing families and kids over the last 10 years as a result of this. Do you get these kids in trouble? Meaning that they're finally going to take oh, that big risk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, especially when, when, you know, uh, adaptive surfing is one thing, but you know, when, when WCMX is mixed into it, you know, with, with my box and, you know, just, uh, the, the blowing up of that sport. Um, I can't tell you how many IEPs and, and, and calls I've had from, from parents, you know, saying that the principal is calling them on a regular basis. It's great. The kids are jumping, jumping down flights of stairs in their wheelchair. And then I basically, you know, fire it to them, you know, this way. And the fact that, you know, you wouldn't stop an able-bodied kid from jumping down a set of stairs or playing on a jungle gym, would you? I mean, if they skin their knee, you're not going to stop the world turning for them, would you? You know? No. It's, uh, the d- d- disabled kids are the exact same way. You know, they're, they're kids, you know, they're, they're supposed to get skinned up knees. They're supposed to, you know, push their limits. They're supposed to, you know, occasionally do stupid things and fall, but they, you know, the, the important thing is that they get back up and they try it again and, you know, they, they push those limits. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, that being said, it's, uh, it, it's always a beautiful thing. You know, when you, when you see a kid, you know, uh, reevaluate what's possible you know, in their lives and, and then take their, uh, take their skills to that next level. So the feeling of freedom must yeah. be incredible. Say, so you pull somebody from Lincoln, Nebraska, let's say, or where I grew up, Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, where, you know, it's far from the oh, ocean. Wow. And so like uh, a yeah. long, long story is like the sure is they're, they're now able to like hop in the water and like now they're surfing. It's gotta be a really uh, a great experience for sure. And to get to see them do it, it's gotta be incredible. And then you have a pro well, on I mean, hand to help. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's not just about surfing; it's about life. You know, and yeah. the lessons that they, they they learn there can be easily applicable to to all segments of their life. Um, it's uh, you know, and and it, it's not just about surfing. In the fact that you know, we take them you know, quad riding through the jungle, we take them zipline tours over the over the canopy. You know, um, we we go you know uh, you know snorkeling and and sailing and fishing and you know this that and the other. So it's uh, it, it's more about them, you know, uh, driving them to reevaluate what's what's actually possible, what what they're what they're actually able to do versus what you know society imposes on them what they can and can't do. So um, I think uh, you know being able to play a you know that small part you know um, in someone's life is uh, you know it's a it's a really you know um, it's a big blessing. You know, there's, there's really no other word for it. It really is. It's a chance of a lifetime, though. I, I can't believe I didn't know you funded it. Your group funded it too. I thought they could pay yeah. and be a part of it, and and that would be it. But that's pretty incredible. How do they even apply? Do they uh, go through um, like a certain process? Um, yeah, I mean, t- a lot of it's uh, typically word of mouth. We don't do cool. um, um, we don't typically do a lot of uh, you know super outreach. Usually, they're kids that um, that I've worked with, whether it's life holds on or. Um, I coach at an adaptive uh, um, wheelchair sports camp called Ability First up in Chico. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's either between that or, you know, the WC Max team. So um, when we were first starting at, uh, starting out, it was a little bit, a little bit more difficult in the fact that, you know, parents were a little bit more apprehensive and taking that leap of faith. But now that we have this kind of, um, I don't know what, what, what you'd say, uh, this proven track record of success, um, you know, with, with no injuries, you know, which has been, you know, pretty outstanding. Um, I, I think, uh, parents are a lot more receptive to, you know, taking that, that risk. And, uh, um, I mean, we just have a great pool of kids, you know, through, yeah. uh, through the community. Now, how do you get involved similarly, like with global mobility? Did they snag you or were you on the ground floor of that? What happened? Um, another interesting story. So the, the fundraising, um, dinner, um, that I was going to, um, the, the same, actually the day after I met Frank. No, I'm sorry, the day after I spoke to Frank, um, was when I, uh, it was this big well to do at the, the Beverly Hills Hilton and, 
um, you know, Paris Hilton was there and, you know, Jackson Brown was playing and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It, was, it was, it was really, really like over the top, um, in a beautiful way. But, um, cool. I was, uh, um, I was sitting at the, the martini bar, just getting a martini and, uh, the, uh, development director for Gold mobility came up and his name was Brian Miller and we hit it off and he's like, I got to introduce you to my boss. He's awesome. And, uh, his boss is now, uh, uh, one of my best friends, uh, David Richard. Um, who's the the CEO and um, we immediately hit it off and um, always admired and respected uh, you know uh, what, what he does within you know the world uh, adaptive community and mm-hmm. um, just a just an amazing human being and um, a lot of fun so um, yeah we've been uh, we've been bouncing all over the world and uh, traveling together for uh, about a decade now. I was going to say with your personality and you, you were in a light before your injury. It wasn't like you, you weren't used to having the spotlight on you. You were, I, I figured that it was probably pretty easy for, um, for people to pick you up, approach you to help, you know, with good causes and so forth. You're not scared of talking publicly and getting out there. And so it makes sense. You're a perfect fit for, um, you know, uh, being a spokesperson, it's just, you're not shy. No, no, no. Uh, thank you. But, uh, yeah, prior to my injury, I was actually uh, very introverted. And, um, For real? Socialized, right? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I, I wasn't a social butterfly when it came to uh, when it came to people. I, uh, I kept very much to myself and uh, was, you know, fairly quiet unless I, I knew them well. So, um, yeah, that that just came about from not so much, um, you know, having that that kind of uh, that kind of requiem, but you know, just being forced into that position, you know, through through what I do. So. Um, yeah, it's a, it's been a learned skill and a, a, a hard fought skill to kind of break out of my shell in that regard. Man, you you're natural with it. I will say you're completely natural with it. So that surprises me. Oh, but you. you were young. I mean, face it, twenty twenty five is young, man. That's a young age. And so I'm from the same era, and um, we're all different at twenty five and previously in terms of our ability to handle, um, you know, public public speaking, for instance second greatest fear or yeah. first greatest fear or whatever <laughs> right yeah yeah I'm, I'm, I'm still not uh i've been told i'm pretty good at it but uh, uh i'm not I'm still not a huge fan of public speaking you know in front of large groups to be honest right. yeah, interpersonal you know one-on-one i'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm pretty adept at that but um no big big crowds and all that I, I i tend to shy away from do you write your own stuff too like are you i see you write is this you writing like um uh this most recent one in february of the history of otter um, because no, that that was actually that was actually an interview. Um, that was uh, um, that was an inter- interview by New Mobility Magazine, yep. um, which is a major disability publication. Yep. Um, oh yeah. But uh, but no, that was just a uh, no different than we're doing now. It's just a fun conversation. It's a great converse. I mean, it was a great piece, and I, I I'll link it in the show notes. I think people need to see that. I think it's a, it's really awesome. Your story is awesome. I mean, in terms of like Thank you. how how driven you are. That's a question for you that I had. How do you stay so driven? Uh, I don't know. Um, I just, I've always, uh, I don't know. I've, always, I've just always had this, uh, I don't know. Um, that's a hard one. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just who I, it's, it's just who I am. I, I just, I, I don't really have any other way of putting it. I've always been, you know, um, I've always been that way, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what I was doing, whether it was, you know, skating or surfing or any sport or, you know, I've always just kind of had that, that inherent drive to, you know, push things as far as I can push them. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's it, I guess. Who were, <laughs> well, I, I think about this too, after that question as a follow up when you're recovering from this injury, you know, you're recovering from the injury Were there integral, like, uh, tools, integral people, um, whatever it may be, integral books, what, you know, what did you rely on? also additional tools to get you um through the recovery process um well I'm, I'm a not to get too spiritual about it but i've always been a firm believer that you know people come into your life for a reason you know cool. certain people are placed in your life at, at specific times in your life you know whether it's for good or for bad but you know it's the lessons that you take away from you know from those encounters and from those relationships that you know will will serve to define you you know throughout your life so uh yeah uh, there are quite a few people um the, uh, as far as WCMX, uh, I met Aaron when he was 14 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had, uh, you know, my other friend, uh, um, uh, Scott Horton, um, who is, a um, uh, path, you know, a path 
setter um, in WCMX, you know, when yep. it was first starting off. Uh, we got together, you know, very, very soon out of my injury. I think I was only like four or five days out of the hospital when we met at a skate park. Um, and uh, he, he was always a, uh, you know, a, a really big initial, uh, you know, um, I don't, don't want to say inspiration because I, I hate the I word. Uh, I'd say a, a person of a person of empowerment. You know, he really empowered me to to push my limits and and kind of force me to to reevaluate what what was possible. Um, uh, he was always a, a really big one. Aaron was definitely another one. Uh, we went on our first uh, tour in Seattle. This was in uh, late two thousand eight. No, no, mid two thousand eight. Um, but, uh, yeah, he was, a uh, you know, a, a big, uh, big point of empowerment. You know, we've been fantastic friends for a long, long time now. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, my buddy Ishmael Goulon, uh, who lives in, uh, France, uh, he was an adaptive surfer and a Sino Parata in Brazil. Um, we hit it off at a, you know, really early on in my injury and, you know, I was watching, you know, they're both amputees, um, mm-hmm. but really, really amazing surfers and fantastic people. So, um, yeah, they, uh, you know, we always talk on social media and stuff like that and, uh, and meet periodically to go surf. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, there are always those people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying to catch up. There. Well, I've been trying to catch up with Aaron for a bit. Well, I'm here in Vegas too. I knew he was hitting the skate parks back in the day. So I knew you two collaborated. He's, uh, he's, he's super good, man. He's super talented. And, um, oh, that's an, that's an absolute understatement. That yeah. guy is that guy is WCMX God. Like yeah. there is there. I mean, there's when you meet him when they're, you know, I met him when he was 14 and you know, you could, you could always see, I mean, there are certain kids that, that you meet who have that, that spark and that drive. But mm-hmm. then again, they're operating on an entirely different level than any other athletes. And I, Aaron is definitely one of those, like the, the things he's able to do in his chair um, are, are just, unspeakably difficult like just absolutely incredible and the fact of the matter is they make them look so easy you know you uh the to the uninitiated it may it might look like an easy trick but it's actually incredibly difficult and you know he just makes it look easy so um yeah I, yeah <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing i have a skate park seriously like like a three minute walk whatever from from our place and it's just right around the corner and i thought i saw a video of him at it i'm like maybe i'll see him here at some point and see uh, uh what park um anthem right anthem area do you know anthem yeah 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 i do so yeah he mostly hangs out at pro park um that's his that's his usual haunt um, yeah. in vegas so yeah that one's um, packed for yeah, sure yeah but we yeah we definitely skated in anthem before guess what they shut down anthem park for a week too much craziness. No, why? Too much craziness. The kids are going nuts, they say. Uh, so no. <laughs> the neighborhood yeah. revolted, I guess. I don't know. It was fine. There was no issues there, seriously. I, I was there at all hours, you know, and uh, it, it wasn't bad at all. I guess, I don't know. There's too much. The little kids like playground was right next to the park, which was bad planning, you know. People are going to yeah, swear when they, they fall. So Yeah. And then they, the kids try and turn, you know, the 10-foot quarter into a slide. And- yep you know, end up getting hit and run over. And then there needs to be, you know, in-depth meetings and community discourse and all that BS, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. We're, I'm seriously like, uh, I'm like, I don't know, like 300 yards from it. So from that part. Oh, wow. So I'm right there. We just moved out here out West a little bit ago from DC. So congratulations. Yeah. Thanks man. I love it out here. Love it. I, I, I mean, I say, com- comparative to DC, I'm sure it's a uh, quite a refreshing change of pace. It is. I would rather be in California though so jealous of you guys so freaking jealous such a good lifestyle so pretty i mean i'm listening to you talk on a phone and the best background noise i've ever heard are the birds chirping everything's alive when you get to that coastline it's awesome so <laughs> yeah it really is yeah yeah so, it's, uh, it's a beautiful area for sure so when it, it gets me to this point like you you had a massive injury you know, and a lot of folks have gone through stuff. Yeah, I know you work with a lot of folks that were disabled from the start or, um, you yeah. know, something. But you had something happen in the middle or not in the middle, early in life. And um, what has this all taught you like about life? It's a loaded question, Ooh. right? Ooh, that, that, that's, I'm going to have to take a moment and think about that one. That's uh take your time. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, every, everyone draws their own, you know, their own conclusions from, you know, a, a fundamentally life changing, you know, situation. And it doesn't just have to be an, an injury. It can be anything. Um, there's one immutable universal, universal fact that, you know, this injury has taught me. It's that, you know, um, don't be afraid to push your limits. Don't be afraid to, uh, to take things in stride, you know, um, mm -hmm. don't be afraid of life basically. Um, you know, so many people wander through life, you know, uh, never having, you know, pursued their dreams or their ambitions, you know, they're, they're content in, in mediocrity, you know, just because that's, they, they feel that that's what life has forced them to do, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's so unnecessary, you know, I mean, there's life, life is about risk, you know, and if there's, uh, you know, one lesson that, you know, I've, you know, uh, forced myself to accept as far as this injury, you know, it's, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't hinder yourself on the things in life that you can't change. You know, we all face trials and tribulations, you know, uh, but, you know, don't let the, don't let things, you know, just de destroy your, your dreams and ambitions for the future, you know, mm -hmm. so. for sure. That's it, essentially. Now, here's a, a question I kept rolling in my head as you were talking earlier. Um, you, you do speak to the peer groups, you know, peer recovery groups. You speak in a lot of realms, I'm sure. Um, say you got somebody that was recently injured or somebody yeah. that recently went through something really tough. You kind of hit on mm -hmm. this a little bit. Um, what what do you say to them as they're just they're just not moving now? They're just sitting there and not accepting what happened or they're, they're just depressed. What do you, what do you say? Well, I mean, what's the alternative? I mm. mean, you can, you can, you can, you can sit there and, you know, and, 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 you know, basically destroy yourself, you know, emotionally and mentally, you know, with the, the shit in life that you can't change, you know, or you can get up, you know, off your ass and do something about it, you know, to, 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 to improve your life, you know, and, I think when you fire him, you know, that question hard. Um, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a brutal question, you know, but yeah. it's, it's and in many cases, it's, it's absolutely necessary because they're to that point where, you know, more often than not, other people try to talk them, you know, out of, out of that situation. And, you know, I think it, it, it comes across differently when you're, you've already been there, you've been in that situation, you know, whether you're in a chair or, or what have you, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's not, um, you know, you, you just have to put them to the metal like that, you know, mm -hmm. is, is the fact that, you know, are you, are you going to allow yourself to basically stagnate for the rest of your life, you know, or, or are you going to, you know, do something about it? You know, the choice is entirely yours. And that's, that, that's basically what it boils down to is, is choice, you know, and, you know, for me personally, I've never been, you know, that, that kind of, of person I've been trying to, you know, try my best to, you know, give people a different perspective of, you know, what is possible. And it doesn't just have to be about sports. It can be about anything. Yeah. Know, it could be, you know, academia, you know, it could be going back to school and getting a degree. It could be, you know, pursuing a, you know, a certain career path that, you know, you've always aspired for. Um, but it's, uh, you know, the lesson serves, you know, uh, every aspect of life. It's not just about sports. Yeah, I agree, man. That is a big lesson. That choice, though, knowing that you do have a choice to go one way or the other, or whatever, you know, not staying in that rut. Now, I got a, a question for yeah. you before I let you go. What does the future hold for you? Where are you going now? What are you doing now? Oh, uh, lots of exciting stuff on the horizon. Um, we're um, as far as uh, as far as surfing goes. Um, you know, I'm a captain of the U.S. adaptive surfing team, mm -hmm. um, and our major goal right now is um, our uh, our able-bodied team is heading to Tokyo in 2020, um, which will be part of that delegation. But um, in 2024, we're gearing up for um, bringing adaptive surfing to the Paralympics in Paris, um, which will be uh, really ironic considering that'll be uh, uh, you know 30 years uh, almost to the day that I I ended up moving and living there. As a kid. say, bro, so, that's um, your homecoming. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's uh that's that's going to be the the final mark for me, you know. After that I'm going to I'm going to retire from the tour and and everything else. So, um wow. Yeah, it's uh that's the that's the big one. That's sick timing. That's great. 
That's, that's really great timing. So uh, in terms of uh, going back home, man, and then uh, what about your projects? You're going to still be doing. Um, you're you're still going to be doing the mobility, global mobility, and oceans healing group and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, global mobility. Um, um, Riznu Tommy, who's uh, David Richard's wife, she's actually uh, um, been nominated by the Indonesian government for the uh, the CRPD ambassadorship for the United Nations. She's been a United Nations delegate for you know the last ten years. Yeah, and nice. um, and and I, I work really closely with them and, and global mobility. So I imagine I'm going to be traveling in Southeast Asia a whole lot in the in the coming years. But so you, you, um, but yeah, just... yeah, just trying. Oh yeah, you travel so freaking much. I, I'm actually jealous. I'm a, I do like to travel, even though I complained about the grind. But I mean, that's got to be just incredible to be out there and just you know hitting new regions, doing all kinds of cool stuff like that. Yeah, I've, I've always been um definitely a you know a heavy traveler. You know, I, that, that got injected to me uh, you know when I was a, a really young kid. So um, it's uh it's a bug, you know, the travel bug is, is, is very real. And totally. you know, as soon as you start to live that lifestyle, it's, it's hard to give it up. So, um, yeah, I, I imagine myself, uh, when I retire from the tour, I'll, uh, I'll be populating my schedule with, with a lot more, uh, international NGO work and instead of uh, tour events, but, uh, I'll still play a part in surfing. I'll, I'll probably be a, a coach with team USA at that point. So nice. Nice. How can people reach you if they want to talk to you? You're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, where can they reach you? Yeah, yeah. Facebook's the the, the easy one. Um, um, you know, stay uh, you know fairly up to date, or at least I try to. Um, or they can email me um, if it's a uh, business related. Santa Cruz Soul Surfer at hotmail dot com. Um, nice. But yeah, it's um, yeah. Uh, Facebook's usually the best way to reach me. Cool. I'll link up your Facebook. I'll link up your Instagram. I'll put it all in the show notes. I'll put it on the site. Everything and people can reach you that way. Um, they can cool. email you. It's awesome it's awesome to hear from you get to talk to you finally um i, I yeah, stalked you i stalked you for a while and i'm really grateful for your time and definitely want to catch up with you again thank you no thank you scott it's been a blast all right let's wrap this thing up again big thanks to christian bailey for coming on and sharing his story you can find christian on facebook at christian otter bailey or on his organization site www.oceanhealinggroup.org or at boxwheelchairs.com. And lastly, Instagram at instant underscore otter, I-N-S-T-A underscore O-T-T-E-R. Go there, find them. Also, you can find us at livingadaptive.com. All the episodes and this episode here. And if you need to find these links, just open your app and look at the show notes. It's right there, people. Pretty simple. Anyways, talk to you next time.